and from verse 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. We can't let it listen to the reading of this word. Let's sing together the hymn number 46, version 2. Based on the 46 psalm, hymn number 46, version 2. God is our refuge and our strength. We can read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. Concerning the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. When he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marvelled at him and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. And it came to pass the day after, that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this room of him, went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. May God at his blessing offer the reading of his word and grant us all understanding. We do give a warm welcome to all of our visitors with us and we pray that you all know the Lord's blessing as we hear the gospel of his grace this evening. The preacher is our pastor, Dr. Peter Masters, 
and this evening's service will include believers' baptism. Audio and video recordings of recent ministry, including DVDs, are available in the entrance vestibule. Today's ministry will be available after this evening's service, and our Sword and Trial magazine can also be obtained. During this week, our prayer meeting is on Monday evening at half past seven. Our Bible study is on Wednesday evening, and the preaching will be our pastor, whose subject will be spiritual lessons from the life of the prophet Elisha. This service begins at half past seven and is followed by a time of fellowship and refreshments, and we do encourage all to join with us on Wednesday evening to study God's Word. Our services next Sunday will be at 11 in the morning and half past six in the evening, where the preacher, God willing, will be our pastor. At the close of this evening's worship, Dr. Masters will be available in his vestry for any who would like to see him. And now the stewards will take up our offering for the Lord's work. Let's pray together. Oh God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we come again into thy presence in prayer, and we praise and thank thee we may do so. Oh Lord, we thank thee for this facility, for this opportunity to call upon thy name. Oh Lord, we remind ourselves that we are people who could have no great influence and find no significant audience with the high and the well placed in this world, and yet our prayers can soar above them all into the very throne room of the Most High God. O oh Lord, we thank Thee that Thou art a God of great condescension, and Thou dost stoop to hear the prayers of people such as we are when we come in the name of Jesus Christ, the all-prevailing Saviour. O oh Lord, we thank Thee that we may come in Christ's name, seeking pardon and forgiveness of all our sin. We thank Thee, O oh Lord, that His death on Calvary fully atoned for all who come and who trust in Him alone for salvation. We praise Thee and thank Thee, O oh Lord, that Thou art a personal God and Thou art approachable to human beings. O oh Lord, we praise and thank Thee that whenever we call upon Thy name in faith, in the name of Jesus Christ, Thou dost surely hear us from on high and do wonderful things for us and in our lives. O oh, gracious God, we thank Thee that Thine ear is ever open to a cries of those who trust in Thee. And, O oh Lord, we pray this night that Thou wilt receive us, that Thou wilt cleanse us, that Thou wilt hear us. We come, Lord, praising and thanking Thee for all that Thou hast done for us. We thank Thee for the day when we first came to know Christ as Saviour. We praise Thee and thank Thee, O oh Lord, for all the assurance that we have had and for the countless interventions in our lives and blessings from on high. We praise and thank Thee for the work of grace within us. O oh Lord, we marvel at all that Thou hast done. And we come thanking Thee also that we can gather in this way this night to hear Thy word, to hear the message of salvation, and we pray for all those gathered with us who have never yet sought Thee or found Thee, who cannot say that they know Thee and approve Thee. O oh Lord, come, we pray, in the power of the Holy Spirit this night, and incline our hearts to Thyself, and open our minds and our wills, that we may listen to this message of salvation. O oh Lord, we pray that Thou wilt do mighty things in many lives, the people may not be the same as they were before, but find thee and know thee and love thee and prove thee. O oh Lord, come down in our midst, we ask this night. We pray for our city, for our land, for this world. We know, O oh Lord, that this world has not an indefinite time before it, but that day is coming when thou shalt end this present dispensation of time, and thou shalt end eternal things. And we pray, Lord, that thou wilt yet call many out of the world, out of a life dedicated only to themselves, that they may find thee and know thee. O oh Lord, thou hast done this in our lives. We are 
those who had no time for thee, who once slandered thee, who did not believe thy word or the things of the gospel, and yet, O oh Lord, thou didst humble us to the dust and bring us to feel our need and to seek after thee and to know thee. And we pray that thou wilt do this work in many lives yet, that people may know eternal life, that people may know real purpose and meaning in their lives. Oh, come in mercy, we pray. Let not people in their multitudes go on their way and through their lives with no grasp of eternal things. Speak to hearts, O oh Lord. Come and bless thy message wherever it is proclaimed this night in churches and chapels. O oh Lord, we pray that thou wilt come down and work in hearts and draw needy souls to thyself. Bless us here in this place and make thy mercy and kindness and power known even in our midst. We ask these things in the name of our Saviour, for his sake. Amen. Sing together the 385. In number 385, out of my bondage, sorrow and night, Jesus I come. Turn it out to the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 9. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 9. These are the words. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Those are the words, Behold your God. And the subject is discovering your God. Now the prophet Isaiah, wrote about 700 BC and his very long prophetic book is full of quite astonishingly detailed prophecies. There is in this very chapter the prophecy of the coming of John the Baptist in verse 3, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And then there is prophecy of Christ and his coming. In verse 6, what shall I cry? It begins there and it runs all the way down. Christ who will come. Here in verse 9, behold your God. He's going to see your God. He's going to come. God incarnate in Jesus Christ and much of his work is spoken of. There are amazing prophecies in this book. Isaiah chapter 53. We never cease to be astonished when you consider that almost that entire chapter spelling out in detail the death of Christ on Calvary's cross, the nature of his suffering and what it would be for. Amazing detail in the book of the prophet Isaiah. But I'd just like to think of these words, Behold your God. See him. Look at him in a sense. Consider him. Now, the greatest needs of every one of us can be described in this way. To see our spiritual situation, the cleverest, the most gifted person very often cannot see his or her spiritual situation. We see ourselves only in material terms. We think only in terms of the here and now. We need to see our spiritual situation and we need to consider God. There is such ignorance of God, what he is like, what his attributes, his characteristics are, what his plan is, what his attitude is to members of the human race. It's such ignorance, and yet there need not be. It's all laid out in the Word of God, in the Bible. We even wonder sometimes, well, what is significant about a book like the Bible? Why should there be a Bible? How can I trust the Bible? How do I know it is a significant book or revelation? Well, I can't tell you that tonight except to say in one or two words this, that if God is alive and if he is in heaven and if he has his eye upon us at all and created us and made us for any purpose, then we can be sure of this, that he will reveal himself to us. He won't leave us at the mercy of human imagination 
of the human mind, the thousand and one human ideas of what God may or perhaps be like. God will reveal himself. He'll speak into this world. We cannot think outside our box of flesh and time. We're finite beings. And God, who is eternal spirit, if he is alive, he is the creator. And all the evidence of that is everywhere around us in the design of every part of the universe. But if he is there, he must speak into us and deliver us from the follies, the vagaries of human imagination. So we're not surprised that there will be a remarkable revelation of God. And we have it here in this amazing book, the Bible, which is consistent from cover to cover, that from the very earliest of its books to the last has the same giant cable running all the way through, Christ Jesus. There he is foretold from the very beginning, our need of him, the human race and its need of Christ, what he will do when he comes, what he did when he came, then all the instructions to proclaim him throughout the world. This Bible, so many people think contradictions, and you examine every single one of them, and they're not contradictions at all. The human race, were, there are so many people spreading uh, vague ideas about the Bible, and its myths and its contradictions, but the instant anybody comes to study it, there's no such thing. The so-called, the alleged discrepancies of the Bible fade away like no other literature.